right so very quickly the first and most important priority in any man's life regardless of call regardless of assignment regardless of whatever it is your experience is the first real priority worth dying for worth living for is your relationship with God please write it down your relationship with God is not the first most important thing it is the highest your relationship with God what is the purpose of God in your life please look up you will be surprised how many believers cannot answer this question what is the purpose of God in a man's life many will tell you to make us rich many will tell you to make us succeed you're not wrong but you're not entirely right what exactly is the purpose of God why should Bill Gates need God why should the leader of a terrorist group need God why should a first-class student need God why should a dying man need God why is it that when you stand uh, at the bed of someone about to die you will not tell him remember your real estate have you written your will you just say please have you made your ways right with God and if he gives his life to Christ you can stand there and smile while he transits your relationship with God what is the purpose of God in your life I want to tell you because many believers do not know the purpose and the relevance of God we only know some of the things that he can do but why do I need God and if we do not clear up this understanding it will affect us in the future because Africa look up please Africa as a continent because we're saddled with our pressure of poverty and the need for relevance and several things it necessitates our our religious affiliations so you find out that when people go out of this region and life is comfortable they have um, policies that support their well-being usually they will not need God again so what is the purpose of God in my life is it to make me a man of God is it to make me get a job see purpose is what gives value to everything in life no matter what you have and no matter what you do if it is not supported by purpose purpose answers the question why why God is God blessing someone already I want to give you three reasons why you need God in your life remember we're examining the most important things the priorities in a man's life number one God is important in your life because it is your relationship with God through Jesus Christ that secures your eternal destiny God is relevant in a man's life because without a relationship with God there is no guarantee for your eternal destiny John chapter 3 from verse 15 you read to 17 John chapter 3 it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life then 16 says for God not for angel Michael not for angel Gabriel not for the third living creature for God himself so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting why do I need God in my life because the only security to my eternal destiny is my relationship with God please listen to me there is no educational qualification that crosses the boundary of the earth realm. There is no savvy, business savvy, that sustains the ability to cross the earth realm. It is important for us to understand that our relationship with God is not just a tool for success alone. Primarily, the Bible says if our hope is only in this world, we are of all men most miserable. 
listen to me no matter what you lose in life if your relationship with God is still intact you are still a winner hear what I'm saying and no matter what you gain in life if you lose God in the process you really lost the Bible gives us the parable of the rich man are we Bible students and Lazarus that man had a lot of money that man had so many things and then he died Lazarus died sin too they now get to a realm where money does not count they now get to a realm where education does not count they now get to a realm where political affiliation is not an advantage and the Lazarus is sitting at Abraham's bosom and the man is at the other side and he's standing wondering and crying for a drop of water that means the purpose was not really to quench the kind of test you think are, are we are we together now please listen to me let me tell you this your relationship with God is not loyalty to your parents religion your relationship with God is not an affiliation that um, was brought about by your sympathy to Christianity that you compared many religions and you felt like an award this is the best so I go for it the proposition that we give people sometimes as ministers as to why they should come to God may be very sincere but it is dangerous if the only reason why I introduce you to God is because of tea and bread then you are in trouble the relevance of God spans this realm it is very important this is God for you when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness And find precious joys in married clay Turning sinners into saints And I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after Listen, for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done. You're my life when life. If our hope is only in this life, whether you like what I'm saying or not, a day will come when your wisdom will be tested it will not be tested by an exam it will be tested by a transition the wise ones are the ones who will still stand whether or not they are in this realm listen this is the reason why we continue to introduce people to Jesus it's not that we are guilty of, of not being evangelists no Your relationship with God so the first purpose of God in your life is the security of your eternal destiny number two the second reason or the second purpose of God in your life I hope you understand how I'm, I'm arranging it is your exploits in life it is true that you can succeed in life without God but I guarantee you there will be a vacuum in your success that will make it clear that it's not God that brought you there. 
I've had the privilege, and I will tell you this. I've had the privilege to be connected to a lot of blessed and influential people. I have seen power. I have seen dimensions of wealth and relevance in the lives of people. But I'm surprised at the vacuum that refuses to be filled by these things. Education, money, prestige, and all of these things. When God lifts you, he lifts you in such a way that his space remains intact. Are we together now? Your exploits in life. Daniel 11.32 The Bible says the be part, but the people that do know their God, it says they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Shall do exploits. Your excelling in life depends on your relationship with God. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 30. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 30. 2 Samuel. He says, For by thee I have run through a troop. He says, By my God I have leaped over a wall. Impossible feats based on your connection with God. It is true that our connection with God transcends the relevance that this time brings but it also makes sense in this life oh taste and see that the Lord is good that one with God is truly a majority when God holds your hands like the worship team will always sing everything It is true when God decides to hold a man's hand he will walk wonders through your life that will dumbfound principalities and powers your life becomes an epistle of wonder after wonder why do we need connection with God because our exploits in this life depends on it the wisdom that comes from God the creativity that comes from God the anointing that comes from God I met a family that cried to me and said, Apostle, our lives are in complete shambles. We've heard what God is doing through you. Please, can you pray for us? And I looked at them with joy in my heart because I knew their lives will change. Yes. There is what God can give you that will help you to change men, change cities, change territories. Connection with God is an advantage. And when I talk about God, I talk about the God of the Bible because God means many things to many people. So that there's no confusion, we're talking about the God, the creator of the ends of the earth. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible. Don't let the job situation intimidate you. Don't let the pride of men intimidate you. Just make sure that at all times your hands are on his hands. He says, I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. And step by step, you will watch God lift you level by level. Listen, my life is a testimony of what happens when God holds a man's hand. When you hold God's hand, it's a good thing. But when he holds your hand, Upon a 
hand. The Bible says, and the hand of God was upon, it came upon Elijah. When you do normal and natural things, it's not worthy of commendation because that's what men do. But when your life produces a result that only God can produce, it is proof that you are assisted by a divine hand. You need to strengthen your connection with God. Hallelujah. By you, I will run through a troop. By my God, I will leap over a wall. Let's hurry up. Number three. Now please look up. This is the most important important purpose of God in your life as far as earth is concerned as far as earth is concerned the third point I give you is that only God can give you true peace and fulfillment please write it down the third reason why you need God in your life is that only your connection with God guarantees peace and fulfillment. Everybody please say peace and fulfillment. Most people, please look up. You see, respectfully speaking, most of us here, are, there are very few people here who are already established from all of the indications of establishment. And so most of us are on a journey or beginning the journey to establishment and so on and so forth. So you may not value things like peace and fulfillment because you are still trying to make ends meet. There is a level when you get to, you will find out that nothing in life sustains the ability to give you peace. The highest index for measuring wealth is peace. Write it now in advance and thank me decades to come the highest index for measuring wealth for measuring um, relevance is peace the highest measure of wealth and freedom that's what I wrote here the highest measure of wealth and freedom is peace Three scriptures quickly Romans chapter 5 verse 1 chapter 5 therefore being justified by faith koinonia read on with me we have peace with God hold on don't rush peace with God is different from the peace of God peace with God means I have made my way right with God peace with God it's not the same as the peace of God that you have made peace with God that means when I look at God I stand with joy knowing that there is no barrier that interrupts fellowship peace with God peace with God it says we are justified by faith and now We may have money. We may have titles. And these things are not wrong. We may have all of the things that people chase after. But when you lack peace with God, there is a serious problem. Because at the end of your life, what will give you fulfillment is knowing that my ways are right with God. Look how the generals that transited in recent times transited. Reinhard Bonke knowing that his time was almost there it was with joy and gladness he came to nigeria preached his he knew it was his last message he said it he had raised daniel colenda he had put everything in place and he said earth i see you when we join the cloud of witnesses to come and pick the rest he waved earth by peace with god this man knew where they were going. they were not hoping no billy graham one of the few people who finished his assignment and remained and were just watching earth you will know a man has finished his assignment set up the billy graham institute and when it was time with honor and with joy he waved his hand same thing tl osman 
there are people who wake up and say, where am I? They say, you are not on earth again. It's over. It's over. What happened? The last thing I know is that I left one city. I was hurrying up to go. It's over. Period. Where is my PA? It doesn't exist here. Where is my certificate? It doesn't exist here. Peace with God. John 14, 27. It's a good Valentine message, isn't it? John 14, 27. <laughs> read on with me, Koinonia. Ready? One, two, read. Peace, I live with you. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus is speaking here. Peace, I live with you. Among the many things he... Listen, there are two things the Bible tells us we should expect. One, peace. Two, the Holy Ghost. Peace, I live with you. You need it so much. Forget joy. It will come. But peace, I live with you. My peace, I give unto you. Not as the world gives. It says, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled neither let it be afraid that means these two things will remain in your destiny until the peace of God comes to drive them out trouble fear will remain in your heart until the peace of God comes to build a garrison the peace of God shalom nothing missing nothing broken a state of restfulness look at me the peace of God is not based on results. The peace of God is a supernatural impartation of that dimension. You can be in the midst of fire, yet you are like the still waters. If you are waiting for everything to be in place for you to have peace, that's how the world gives. But there is the peace of God that in spite of every storm in your life and your family, it is true that you've not paid your rent. It is true that things are, you know, haywire, your academics, your life is true. You've not had a child yet. And people see you and you are completely restful. Because there are few things that are worth dying for. There's a peace that I have in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and these peace in my heart only comes alive every time I hear your voice comes, it comes alive There are some of you who are doctors here. Look at me. Young people now are depressed over nothing. It's because they have not had this message. You see people wrinkled, you guess and say you are 40. Say, no, I just clocked 28. What has added your age like that? The trouble that continues to disturb people. I need to make it. I, I'm not teaching you to be irresponsible. But hear me, you will die for nothing. And the world will bury you and keep moving. You need to learn to come to a point where you say, Hey, shut the door at every trouble and everything. And find rest. He leads me beside the steel. Life has a noisy way of depressing you. Left, right, till now you've not gotten a job. Till now you've not married. The child has not come. This has not happened. Today, Valentine, nobody called you again. You see, all those kinds of... Listen, listen to me. When those things happen, it's amazing. Your BP begins to rise. You know why? You are thinking nonsense. That is not the mind of Christ. And yet you can be completely at peace. Where will my school fees come from? Where will my rent come from? Listen, worry does not solve today's problem. Worry kills today's peace. It kills today's opportunities. It destroys tomorrow's door. So that you cannot even make progress in your life. Jesus took a whole chapter to talk about worry. Listen, this is a very powerful message. Learn peace now. Don't wait till they pay you salary. If your peace depends on your external environment, Satan has mastered you. It means you are about to die fast. Only comes alive every time I hear your voice. Not
not every time I receive an alert not every time I receive an award not every time I feel I am making progress the voice of God is my peace ah. a state of restfulness not irresponsibility restfulness Lord you are in control why will you be awake and I'll be awake too one of us should sleep you have chosen that you do not sleep no slumber so let me find sleep many people don't sleep because of all kinds of depression what is happening to my father what is happening to my mother and satan just adjust hey do you know they just said that um the land that your house was built upon there's supposed to be a road there and they're going ha, what will i do and you see people say my soul find rest one more time prophesy say my soul find rest of God is not there there can be an earthquake and he's not in it there can be all kinds of winds and when all that nonsense is gone then here he comes the still small voice are we together do you know that every time we are troubled we should change the power of God from coming to our lives it is only when you are at rest even doctors will tell you when they want to carry out surgical operations of patients and they find out that their BP is vacillating, they will have to say, look, find a way of stabilizing these people emotionally. Is that true? They gather their family members to crack jokes. They find something that makes them happy. It's been proven that when family members are gathered around sick patients or things they like, it can aid their recovery. I was watching i think it was the day before yesterday or so on the news when they were showing people in china dancing to ease the whole the coronavirus and people were just dancing and if it makes them happy why not listen beware of prolonged depression gloominess when when the peace of god does not find expression in your life Death is being ministered to you. You are dying already. It's not when you are sick and cannot move. Are we blessed? Peace. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16. Now, the Lord of peace himself give you peace. How long? By all means. You know what by all means means? Whatever it, it will take God to shake, to ensure that you remain the Lord of peace himself. Give you peace always, by all means, the Lord be with you all. The Lord will give you peace by all means. That is, it is based on his desire to give you peace that he prospers you. If he notices that the, the peace is being interrupted because of poverty, he will switch and attack poverty and take it personal. Not because he's really interested in money. The goal is that you find peace. Please understand this. When God lifts you, when God blesses you, when God wipes your tears, this is what he wants to give you. And he said, by all means. This is why he keeps pumping mysteries upon mysteries. He's giving you all the keys. It is his by all means agenda to make sure that whatever it will take, you do not remain small. The Lord of peace himself will give you peace always by all means. So your relationship